How's it going everybody and welcome to another episode of Wild Vivariums. In today's episode it's going to feature the Eastern Grey Tree Frogs, how I created their setup and a lot of accessories that went with it. But before we get into the build, make sure you're following us on Instagram and liking us on Facebook because we have a lot of important details that we share across those social media platforms. Now getting into today's episode, the Eastern Grey Tree Frog is a tree frog. It's found on trees doing all kinds of activities like hunting, calling for a mate, and hiding from predators. It was only going to be fitting if I created an enclosure that looked like a tree trunk because they could blend in easily. I have more of an explanation for starting this build from the ground up with audio from the actual build. Alright guys, so I'm here recording on my phone. Um, I just haven't been able to get to my camera but I wanted to make sure I got some of this before I got too far ahead. So here's the background. Um, I've, been, I've been building the background for a while. All of this bark that you can see here is from Josh's frogs. So is the um, cork background uh, from Zoomed. But you can see here, beautiful beautiful cork bark here and I'm gonna clean up the silicone and make some changes but I just wanted to show you guys uh, what I've been doing now I also have this uh, bio drain I think Josh's frogs makes their own but for this build I'm using the hydro balls from Zoomed and I did buy these from Josh's frogs 2.5 pounds so it's sufficient for probably a 12 by 12 terrarium so you need a lot if you're trying to fill up uh, 36 by 18 by 36 now obviously you're not trying to fill it up to the very top but you want to have a good bit a good base for the water to drain in and this is going to be a paludarium for eastern gray tree frogs so uh, that's why I chose to go with more of a uh, background that favors a tree and why I chose the cork bark for those frogs specifically and then a paludarium because the gray tree frogs enjoy they do enjoy water and some of the plants I can grow directly from the bottom of the tank in the water area and it'll come the whole way up and it'll look really cool so that's so far what I've been doing what I've been building and the light that you're seeing is an Arcadia uh, Pro Soul T5 uh, and it's a 12 inch UVB fixture with the 12 inch UVB light and what I noticed so far in putting it on top of the gray tree frogs just seeing how they would react to it and how the plants would react to it uh, the light has really increased growth in my plants so I'm interested to see what it's going to do to some of the bog plants and I'm going to have two of these, maybe three of these going. So there's going to be good light. You can see if this is a 36 inch high terrarium and just one of those 12 inch lights is there. That's a pretty good bit of light just from one of those uh, 12 inch Pro T5 bulbs and from the fixture from Arcadia. You can also find that at Josh's Frogs and I'll put links in the description. How's it going guys? So I just started to put some of the plants in and all the terrestrial plants that you're seeing for the most part except for the creeping fig. I got all that from Josh's frogs. I have the Korean rock fern in there, the oak leaf creeping fig. Um, I forget what that, some type of ficus vine or something, I'm not sure. The one in the middle, this one here, I'm not too sure. So we'll just kind of wait and see what comes up with the terrestrial plants. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what comes up. So we'll just have to, you know, let that go. And I just wanted to share with you guys what's been going on. So this is the next day, right after I have set the background in place. Uh, and that was weeks ago. And then the false bottom that I showed you guys is put in. And also there's a barrier. It's uh, like a landscaping fabric. Also got it from Josh's Frogs. Um, and then the soil, it's Exoterra Eco Earth. 
You can get that from anywhere. You can get that from Josh's Frogs, from Petco, PetSmart, online somewhere. But anyway, so that's pretty much all the soil is. I might mix in some things down the road. I have an area where these pots are, and I'm going to add some sand, probably just like play sand or something. And that's going to be like a little uh, water area. I do plan on getting a, a pump hooked up and a misting system and maybe a couple other things. But I just wanted to share with you what I have so far. I'm just super excited to have this opportunity to get these tree frogs in here. They've been in quarantine for like two and a half years or something like that. So I'm kind of pushing hard just to get it done and showing you guys them inside of the tank. Uh, these these tanks, I'm not saying I'm rushing, but I'm, I'm kind of whipping them together, uh, making them look a little different from each other to try and get these animals in because it's been years since I've had living uh, backgrounds, living vivariums and stuff like that. So, you know, if you could recall what Max and Pharaoh and the 125 gallon looks like compared to this, uh, it's very different. You know, the coconut background was put up and for this one, it's the uh, cork bark background with logs on it. And I think it's looking pretty nice, pretty cool. I think it's gonna look great, and the gray tree frogs are gonna love it. As future, t as future opportunities present themselves, we'll modify and we'll take down and make new. But I just want the frogs to get a taste of what it feels like to live in a big environment for a little while, for a few months at least, before we would do anything else. But anyway, that's my little rant, and there's my little plants. So we'll catch up in the next update. PA Woods and Forest Community, let's get ready to check out some epic B-roll of the Gray Tree Frog Enclosure. Enjoy.
one of my favorite camera angles to capture is whenever I get the eye shine of the animal looking back at me because when I'm out looking for these animals in the wild, this is exactly what it would look like in real life. They'd be looking at you, their eyes would be reflecting from the camera light, and you'd be able to see them from this perspective. So I think it's cool to get that camera shot in a vivarium rather than outside. It makes it feel a little more authentic. Now, as you guys saw, there were a lot of moving pieces from the B-roll. I got rid of the paludarium setting because I thought the water could get stagnant and nasty, so I went with a vivarium instead of a paludarium. Now they have a water bin and I can control and manage that, and it's a little bit easier and they seem to use it a little bit more. Now, Moving forward, in the next episode, we'll show you a lot more that we're doing with these guys. I plan on adding more into the soil and doing a lot of unique stuff, weighing them and all kinds of other neat things. But we'll see you in the next one. Please like and subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you.